Hey everybody, welcome back to Sounds Like a Drum, Kane's independent media production. Today, we're talking about, well, what will be the first and probably an ongoing dialogue in this new year, new me, old drums, maintenance, taking care of drums. We're talking about finishes and hardware today. been thinking about specifically some snare drums that we have here that we want to take good care of. We want the finishes to last. We want the hardware to last and basically also keep them easy to tune. I mean, there's, there's more to it than just some of this is functionality stuff too, but it's about making sure that the instrument can perform to its best so that we can perform at our best. So today we're going to touch on lacquer finish, satin or like oil raw wood kind of finish and then sort of metalized finish like you know, aluminum drums you might have and also the metalized finish that you're going to see on your average kind of plated hardware that you see on drums. Additionally we're also going to address some issues around the tension rods and the lugs themselves in terms of how they interact with each other and making sure that you're not getting any kind of trouble there that's going to result in making tuning difficult. Everything we're doing today was done by Ben to the drums you're seeing in front of me and the drums that you're hearing today. Suffice it to say that everything that we're showing today worked out swimmingly on all of these drums and that that also may vary for any drum that you might have. So test in a small spot, maybe on the inside if you're gonna branch out and try to do some of the more like invasive things um, that we're gonna do today. Your results may vary, but our results were excellent with these products and these methods, so there you go. First up, lacquer finish. This is the Pearl Maple. It's in most of the videos at this point probably, at least some part of the kit is. And just the finish is what we're gonna talk about on this one. Now, dealing with a lacquer finish, it's a pretty hard finish, it's very tough. Um, it gets fingerprints, it gets grime, it might get scratches, different things like that. And it's finishes reminiscent to some finishes that you might see on a car. So we did a little research, asked around, and basically landed on a ceramic three-in-one spray for cleaning this particular kind of shell. So the two ingredients here are the spray that we got. It's a little on the pricey side for a cleaning spray, but it takes very little to do a whole drum. I mean, it would take very little to do a whole drum set, really. So it's kind of an investment. And it's made for finishes that are out in the weather 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So you're going to get a lot of time out of one application of this. Microfiber cloth is the other ingredient, um, making sure that we're not scratching the drum when we're applying this. We want something really soft, we want something that's really um, kind of porous and is, is very smooth against the drum. Anytime you're going to use any sort of cleaning product or anything like that, it pays to read the instructions. This particular one has a little bit of instruction about how long it should sit before you handle it again. Um, wiping it down and then getting a clean cloth after it's kind of had that done and get the rest of it off and buff it with a new clean cloth rather than the one that you used after the application. And if you're doing a lot of outdoor gigs, um, you know, as a car might, <laughs> you can do two coats, but you need to give it a day in between the two coats for the first one to kind of settle in. And you're gonna end up with a shiny, tough, protective finish that also smells really nice. All right, next up, drum number two. This guy right here is basically a raw finish. It's It's got some oiling done to it, but it doesn't have any kind of like hard plasticized finish or anything like that on it. It just feels like wood. You can feel the grain, you can touch it. And this is a sort of situation where you're not gonna be buffing or anything like that. This is an oil situation, specifically tongue oil. We're kind of moving from like car stuff into more of like furniture territory. This is basically for penetrating the wood, keeping it from drying out, giving it somewhat of like a more protective finish, but we're still dealing with raw wood, you know, like this isn't gonna stop scratches the way that like a lacquer or something like that would. Same as the other stuff, reading all the instructions, the gist of this is basically, again, taking everything off of the shell, applying a fairly liberal coat with a microfiber, lint-free cloth, that kind of thing. Give it some time to get into the wood before you 
strip it off, and then do it again. Give it another coat, give that one maybe 10 minutes to get in before you wipe that off. And the idea is that we want this to actually get pretty far into the grain so that it stays once we wipe it off. Um, and that takes a little bit of time. We've done this to this drum, we've done it to Craviato's, um, anything where you're dealing with the closest to raw wood, satin finish kind of situation. And again, read the instructions, follow the instructions. You should be okay. If it's a drum you've never done anything like this to, try a little bit on the inside, make sure that it doesn't do anything crazy. I mean, like a really small spot. And at the end of the day, it's really about making sure that the wood stays malleable, resonant, doesn't get cracks, doesn't do anything crazy. Pretty cheap, not gonna use a lot of it per drum. Um, I have no idea how long this can's gonna last us, but it's gonna be around for a while. Additionally, if the inside of your drum has a raw wood situation going on, you can tongue oil that to basically any situation where you're trying to get into the grain of the wood. If you have a painted interior, old Gretsch's, Ludwig's, things like that, don't use it in there. Additionally, when we were refurbing this drum, we also noticed that a bunch of the tension rods were feeling a little gritty. There was a little bit of maybe rust or corrosion starting to happen on the rods themselves. That's trouble. It's going to lead to stripping. It's going to lead to damage. It's going to lead to wondering why this side of the drum sounds like it's tuned really low, but screws really hard to turn. I've noticed a lot of people putting nylon washers on to try to fix that. But nine times out of 10, it's actually that the rod itself is having some problems. A while ago, and I wish I could remember who it was that showed me this, um, very quick little remedy involving steel wool, a drum key, and a power drill if you have one. We're gonna <laughs> say hello to our little friend, Quadruple Ot Steel Wool, which is gonna come up later as well, but this is sort of a thing that you can use it for as well. And all we're really doing is wrapping the screw in the steel wool and then just twisting it in there and it takes the rust right off, and then you can have a smooth turn going in, and then it's ready for the other step, which is lithium grease. The idea with the lithium grease is that basically we wanna have smooth turns when we're tuning the drum, and if we're having issues with the lugs backing out or anything like that, we don't wanna solve that by having some kind of resistance in the turn, we just wanna have you know, like a lug lock or something like that, but in terms of having any kind of grit or resistance actually on the screw or in the lug, that's only gonna cause damage, it's not gonna help or fix anything. So a very, very, very tiny amount of lithium grease, like just enough to cover the end of the very end of the screw is probably enough because it goes onto the threads as you screw it in and covers the whole thing up. And then it's gonna open up your tuning range, you're gonna be able to go higher without feeling resistance, um, and you're also going to extend the life of these things. And especially if you have tube lugs or some kind of lug that doesn't have like a recessed little piece in there that you could replace if it gets stripped out. I mean, it's the life of the drum, really. Door number three, drum number three, the Acrylite. Aluminum shell, has a little bit of a textured finish to it, but it's basically just a raw aluminum shell. And it gets fingerprints, it gets tarnish, it can get all kinds of things going on with it. But we're gonna get to that after we talk about the hardware, because the place that I see the most kind of like cosmetic, sketchy stuff going on on any drum is actually on the hardware, on the lugs and the hoops and things like that. And if you've already got like pretty dramatic pitting going on, then, there's not a whole lot you can do. Um, hopefully, you know, you can replace them if you want to. Uh, this is a largely cosmetic issue, but it can get bad enough that there can be problems with cracking and stuff. But if you're just looking at surface stuff, a little bit of scratching, or if it's gotten dull, that's where we bring in the steel wool. Now, this is not a go big or go home situation. This is quadruple aught, zero, 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 the finest, fluffiest, seemingly least invasive steel wool that you can possibly find. It's more than enough to deal with the stuff on chrome hardware, lugs, claws, all that kind of thing uh, that you would be able to get off. If this doesn't take it off, it's not coming off. Don't go harder than this. And once you've gone over all of these parts, and Take them off the drum before you do this. <laughs> Take all the parts off so that you can hold them in your hand and get all the nooks and crannies and everything and not bump into the shell if, if you're using something that's wood or more sensitive than that. Get them back on, they're gonna look brand new, they're gonna look beautiful. I started doing this when I used to buy and sell a lot of drums, when I was learning about drums and going through things, flipping them, get things that looked a little rough, clean them up, double your money, especially if it's a vintage thing. People love 
a vintage drum that still, you know, doesn't look like it's been through a war. <laughs> I sort of alluded to this a minute ago. Steel wool on a shell of any kind, just just don't. Um, it's not going to do anything that you want. Uh, it might seem like it would. It might seem like the right thing. It's not. So steel wool, take the hardware off, take the rims off, whatever you're going to do, do it somewhere else and then put them back on. This is the jam right here for metal shells, chrome, aluminum, that kind of situation. This is pretty new to me. This was introduced uh, to Ben. This is a motorcycle and car kind of thing again. And it's basically little rags that have a kind of polishing compound in them. So it's a tin full of rags that are kind of saturated in this really, really, really gentle polishing compound. But the rags themselves are not abrasive at all. They're super duper soft. And when you pick them up, they just feel a little bit damp and there's you know, this stuff on them. But this drum is like 50 years old and it looked it. And now it looks brand new. And I watched the first little like wipe of it and it was like watching an eraser. It was unbelievable. So after you've steel wooled your hardware off of the drum, you can do this to that and make it super duper shiny. And then take that, bring it over here, do it to the shell. Um, it's really incredible. I've never seen anything like it in my life. It's also, you know, not the cheapest thing in the world, but you're not going to be doing this every day. You might be doing it once a year, once every couple of years, depending on how much you handle the drum and where you're playing and stuff like that. But excellent product, never dull. It's the jam. And um, it made this drum look brand new. All right, that about wraps it up. Wraps it up. We didn't talk about wraps. Wraps are a whole other thing, and we'll talk about wraps later. There are so many kinds from so many different eras, depending on how dried out and old they are. It's all a whole other thing. But thanks so much for coming with us on these three finishes and talking about the chrome and the and the hardware and all that stuff. We we're really excited to share this information. I haven't done any of this to any of my drums yet, and that's the next step now that we've done some of the studio here. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and click the notification bell so you hear about our new episodes. We have more content coming out now than ever before. This is going to be a busy, busy, busy year, um, which is fantastic. We're really thrilled about that. And it's largely due to the patrons um, taking care of us, allowing us to keep this going. Please check out the Patreon if you haven't yet. Follow the link below. Check it out. See if there's a level that works for you. There's going to be extra content from today. There's extra content <laughs> from everything. Um, and it's a great place to get a hold of us, too, if you want to talk to us directly, have any questions or comments or anything like that. And uh, lastly, tell me all your drum maintenance stories because... I have been a lazy person about drum maintenance and I'm learning a lot. <laughs> I've played and played and played and played and watched things get rusty and look terrible and uh, I'm coming around to it too. So, um, you know, these are the things that we're using. You tell us what you're using.